Hey guys, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. I have a quick video for you today sharing my five top tips for homeschooling with multiple ages. I have lots of friends who have larger families with lots and lots of kids and not very many friends who only have one or two. So sometimes I forget that there are homeschooling families out there with only one child or maybe one child who's school age and then another one getting older and starting to get ready for school who may not have experience educating multiple kids. It can be kind of a struggle to juggle different ages and different levels. So here are some tips to help you out. Just a quick reminder to please give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Tip number one is going to be to combine any subjects that you can into one level. This is gonna save you time planning as well as time during your school day. It's gonna save you money on curriculum and materials. It's also going to um, safeguard your sanity. I feel like it also promotes kind of a lifestyle of learning in that, you know, this is how we do things in our home. This is what our family does. We learn together. So for me, that means I choose content areas like history and science and art and music, things like that, that we can combine and all explore together. I also try to stick to the same companies for our curriculum, even if they're at different levels. For example, our math is Math UC. If I had them in different maths, say Math UC and, I don't know, Right Start Math or something else, I would have to adjust based on the format, you know, for each child. Sticking to one curriculum company and one format for that subject makes it much easier when I'm planning, when I have materials available, uh, when I'm going from one kid to the next for their lessons. Tip number two is going to be to encourage independence. Now, this is going to depend on the age of the child, their personalities, their dispositions. But I think most kids, there are some things that you can assign to them or at least guide them toward being more independent. Uh, for us, I focus on our skills subjects like math, some writing activities, some of those things they can do on their own, or I have used curriculum that is easy to show them what to do and then hand it off to them for maybe the rest of the week. That frees up my time and energy to focus on helping out the other child with what they need help with. Tip number three is going to be to establish a workable daily routine. I say routine as opposed to a schedule because I don't like the rigidity of having a you know, strict schedule, this time we're doing this, this time we're doing this. I can't stick to that and neither can my kids. But we do have a flow to our day. We do have certain things that we do in a certain order. So you might have heard terms like a flow chart or a time blocking, whatever you call it, consistency is going to be your best friend. It's going to be much easier to move through your day and it's going to be much easier for your kids to know what to expect, know what's coming next, and be able to do things on their own. So for our homeschool, I like to group all of our content work, our group subjects in the morning, because that's when we're the most alert, we're the most interactive, the most talkative. That's when we cover things like history and science and our read aloud, things like that. Following our content work, I usually let my son go off. He can either take a break and go play, or he has the option to go ahead and get started on things that he does not need me for, like copy work or a math practice page. It's up to him whether he does that and he knows what's gonna happen later in the week if he doesn't get his stuff done. That'll be the time that I sit down with my daughter. She's 10 years old. Her disposition is, she's pretty independent. I can go through lessons with her. Anything that she needs to do with me, she does with me at that time. And then I can trust that she will do the rest on her own. I can send her off and I know she's gonna get it done. Now my son, on the other hand, he's eight years old and he is not the kind of kid who will just independently do what needs to get done because it needs to get done. <laughs> he's not that kind of kid. He really does need a lot more handholding, a lot more redirecting, 
Um, so with him, after I'm done with my daughter, I will sit down with him and I will work through anything that he has to have me for, whether it is a new math concept or a grammar activity. And then once I do those things with him, I tell him like the rest is on you now. I'm going to sit here and do my work and you need to, you know, focus on your work and I'll help him try to stay focused. If he's getting overwhelmed, I'll, you know, tell him, why don't you go take a break? Just take five minutes and go play and then come back and we'll work on this. And that seems to help. But there are days when I have things I need to do, whether it's chores or my own side projects. So he knows like once I finish with our one on one work, it's up to him to get his stuff done and it's a work in progress. He's going to take much longer to get to that point of independence, but that's the goal. Tip number four is to communicate assigned work clearly. You need to make sure that whatever it is you want your kids to do on their own while you're working with another child or while you're doing your own chores or work, that they are clear on what is expected of them. Put a system in place that works for you and that works for them, whether it's binders, whether it's work boxes or some kind of checklist system. Trello is an awesome digital option. Whatever it is, make sure you're consistent, make sure they know how to use it, that it's been in place for long enough that they're used to it, and that will make that transition to independence much, much easier. Be sure to take the time to hold their hand and guide them through a new system when you put it in place. It's kind of hard to throw a new system at them like work boxes and then expect them to get it after maybe one week. A lot of kids are going to need a lot more hand holding and a lot more guidance until that becomes a routine and a habit. Last but not least, tip number five is to organize your materials for easy access. You're already short on time, who isn't? Save yourself the trouble, keep your things nearby, keep them handy within easy reach. I like to have a one of those rolling teacher carts right next to the table when we're working and it has all of the teacher guides that I need for group subjects and for their individual work right there. I can just grab it as soon as we're ready for it. Also be sure your kids have access to everything they need to do their work, especially their independent work. You want them to be independent, they're going to need to be able to independently access everything that they need, whether it is an art material like colored pencils or math blocks or some reference books like an atlas or a dictionary. Make sure that it's all clearly visible, they know where it is, they can get it without any help from you, and that's going to make your day much smoother. Well, that's all I have for you. I hope that this was helpful. I don't want to sound like I'm preaching to anybody or talking down to anybody. I just want to give you guys some tips and help if you need it. Let me know in the comments down below, how many kids do you have? Um, do you struggle with working with more than one child? Do you have any other tips for other homeschoolers out there working with multiple kids? Another question I have for viewers is how do you handle working with multiple ages when you have littles in the house? Because I don't have littles in the house. I haven't had littles for a long time. My little is eight years old and that's old enough to not be a little anymore, really. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Happy homeschooling and I will see you next time.